TikTok is a strange platform and proof that reincarnation is real. Vine walked with six second videos so TikTok could run shilling bang energy drink in every single video. Mm. Yeah. I'm getting more of a seared bite. But when product placement wasn't enough, the most famous TikTokers got together to expand their brand. They could have done what all the YouTubers did in 2018, like write a book or go on tour. Take me up. But they thought of something better. And so came forth from the heavens at Away General, a medical drama full of TikTokers. <laughs> Starring Dixie D'Amelio. If, if you don't know who Dixie is, by the way, you're probably one of the 92% uh, the that currently watch me. She has a very famous sister who's the most followed person on TikTok, where she makes brave, thought-provoking content, like sitting in the back of a car and mouthing whatever song is currently popular. Well, that's, uh, it's nearly as easy as my job. And just wanted to mention, if you're new here, consider subscribing. I know every YouTuber says it and it's infuriating, but it's totally free. And if you do subscribe, you can never change your mind because you've signed a contractual agreement to never unsubscribe. Plus as well, uh, Will and E's very close to overtaking me. Right, anyway, you lot, that's the end of the video. I hope you have enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, I'm not having a man that sounds like this be the dominant channel. Oh, wait, hey, man. Wait, I'm gonna, gonna watch some TikToks, man. That's what I do. Just a quick mention as well. I've got a second channel with highlights and more kind of gaming related content, but I now have a VODs channel where I upload completely unedited highlights of my entire Twitch stream. So you guys can watch that right now. But first, I feel like for this video, I need to change into some more clinical attire. The show itself was made by Brat TV, which specializes in the most premium of Zuma content. Outaway General is essentially Grey's Anatomy for four year olds. But personally, <laughs> there's only one doctor show that I like. Parasta terveyspalvelua lähellä silua. Kyss. So please, if you'll join me in the doctor's office and watch a burnt out YouTuber punching down and bullying kids for the first time in 2022. Looks like you're running late. The show opens up with a recap of the first season. Honestly, I actually remember nothing of the first season. It was so vapid. I just remember they had the old guy from Up and he overacted quite a bit. Having a touch of a heart attack. Are you okay? But the main premise, a bunch of teens go into a hospital and volunteer for free. <laughs> in hoping to get enough training that one day they could get their medical license. The first season ended with two students, one of them being Holden, played by Eric Matanes. Matan, Montan, Montan, Montanas, yeah, Montanas. Who, of course, does the funny TikTok and has an anime profile picture. So that's two strikes. And Rosie, played by Lauren Kettering, who does the TikTok, but on her kitchen floor. Although, to be fair, dancing on your kitchen floor, that's not the worst thing I can imagine. Anyways, both of them in the series finale went to the emergency room, with Rosie having meningitis, and the doctors could easily diagnose this by briefly touching her head a couple times. She's dehydrated. And Holden, his condition was so forgettable. I, I think it was like a transplant or something. My personal law theory is that he went to the parasitical subreddit, and now he needs a lobotomy. Hey, there it is! Kill it! Both go under the knife at the same time, and that's where the show concluded, with season two beginning at a six month time jump, something Utopia series two would shamelessly steal seven years earlier. I just want to say as well, I did way too much research for that recap. No one over the age of seven will ever care about this show. I went onto the IMDb page for season two and people have just uploaded Zelda CDI images for the thumbnails. Great, I can't wait to bomb some Dodongos. We then get some establishing B-roll footage that is so boring, I'm just going to insert actual stock footage of hospitals and you'll have to guess which is which. When we get inside, we see Rosie and Holden, and both are apparently completely fine. I guess the cliffhanger in season one was just totally pointless and had no value. And to top it all off, they only give a minute amount of context to what even happened. I mean, it went well. I feel great. And now you're a TV? 
Just feels like everything happens for a reason. Sometimes it does. This isn't even like seeing them changed or anything to peak interest. They are the exact same people in the exact same condition at the season finale. In season one, Rosie's meningitis was debilitating with her falling unconscious at a party that the hospital threw for all the volunteers. It was building up to a huge climax and a reason for the seven-year-olds to watch the TikTokers instead of just pulling out mommy's iPad and watching TikTok. Okay, I, I wanna put a thought out there. Imagine Breaking Bad. Yes, we are doing a Breaking Bad comparison. Shut up. Imagine Walter going to the doctor's office, being told he has inoperable lung cancer, only to go home and do a cough so horrific it blows out all the tumors <coughs> curing him instantly rosie and holden are then quickly interrupted by a girl who acts like every single youtuber when they get a low performing video it's probably just sprained you'll be back in time for nationals my foot feels like it's detached from my body i need a doctor now yikes i guess karma does exist <laughs> who who, who is this? My mother. Why, why, why is he talking to them like they've known each other for years? I, I had to go back through season one and, and this guy was never mentioned. I went to the Attaway General Wiki. That is a real thing. I am not... Some some poor child actually spent their afternoon instead of being on TikTok and made a wiki for this page. But yeah, this is Benny, played by uh, Brendan Jordan. A British person drinking tea? I never would have thought. <laughs> And Benny is a volunteer for Attaway General. I have no idea who he is, but I looked him up and found his Twitter and here are his pronouns so I don't accidentally misgender him and Twitter comes to cancel me. Benny's character is usually very cynical and snide, usually trying a bit too hard to convey his character. What are you doing? I'm doing those angry push-ups, girl. Oh, well, your form is terrible. Funnily enough, him tryharding just reminds me of that TikToker Bentelect. You may not know the name, but you know the TikToks. Some hoodies don't hoodie the way other hoodies hoodie. <laughs> Am I going to sleep early tonight? No, nobody. <laughs> Personally, I'm just always going to see him as Eddie Redmayne, the guy that does the, the funny shouty in films. It had dice. Fucking neighbor's watching me. The, na the neighbor's literally looking at me. He's looking, the neighbor is looking right at me. And the, the neighbor has not waved back. That is so awkward. Now, one thing you'll notice is how 90% of the original cast aren't in the second season. Mostly because after the first season, they all got a brand deal with Bang Energy or they just wanted to further their careers. Guys, I have led you all astray and I'm so sorry. Dixie D'Amelio is not in season two of That Away General. I know, guys, I know. I know, I, I'm so sorry. Apparently, the main reason for her leaving was so she could focus on her music. Let's hear some of that now. Just your face on how the chili sauce. Someone's calling me in the middle of recording. We silence the phone and then we throw it. So the returning cast for this season, apart from Rosie and Holden, are Nina, the volunteer manager, and Dr. Henry, who played Dixie D'Amelio's dad. And that Dr. Henry, oh, he's doing very important things on his phone. Dr. Henry? Oh, sorry everyone, I was just dealing with some important business. They're the only ones left after everyone else has pretty much Thanos snapped out of existence. With the new cast now being Benny, <laughs> we have Sasha, played by Mackenzie Brooke. Her TikTok says, always be you. <laughs> How brave. Dr. Henry explains to the group that the best performing volunteer will get a special reward. This year, one of our volunteers is going to have the opportunity for a summer internship at Manhattan Metropolitan. New York City? I'm not sure why you'd want to go to New York City. I'm pretty sure everyone's trying to get out of there. See, I live in New York. A thousand dollars a month in New York will get you a cardboard box with enough money left over to buy a glass bottle to go fuck yourself with. That was the only reason I've continued to stay here is because of the Gabagool. I think the only guy that wants to stay in New York is Sneeko. And um, uh, <laughs> baby Sneeko. Now, remember when I said most of the original cast just evaporated? Well, Holden was dating Kat from the first season. So to tie this embarrassingly poor plot thread up, they explain that she left very poorly and how only she left. Like the rest of the cast that all disappeared, that they never existed in the first place. What happened to Kit? She got suspended after prom. Wait, you didn't know that? No. Things happen for a reason. It's all part of his plan. His? I thought I knew God's plan. Nina catches up to Sasha and plot twist. They're siblings. And Sasha tells Nina that she has the hots for Holden, which disgusts Nina. Oh God, you have that look on your face. What look? That look when you watch Harry Styles videos on YouTube? What? I don't. Uh, yeah, you do. And stop. Now look, 
Now look, I like Harry Styles as much as the next embryo, but why watch him or listen to him when you can watch Metastasis, a Colombian one-to-one -one scene remake of Breaking Bad? <laughs> En los próximos días se van a enterar de una cantidad de cosas que van a sonar muy raras. Hey, Elijah, this is Benny. He's a new TV. Take that, tryhard hipster. Tryhard hipster. You can tell that this person has never actually played any kind of video game in their life apart from a Nintendo Switch. Low tier. Try hard hipster. Rosie then gets to know Benny and finds out that he's actually one of the siblings of the bully character from the first season. Or as I like to call him, somehow even more angry, Eddie Redmayne. Hello! I create life! It's obviously the same actor. They're just using the identical twin thing as a cope. But, you know, if I'm going to complain about that, then I should really just give this show a pass. We also meet Maeve, who's played by Sharyu Mahale, who's actually, to be fair, a little bit older than the main cast, being 27. And also, apparently, one of the few people being <laughs> an actual actress. What the hell is this? Because when I lock her up, her TikTok isn't the first result. Maeve's character being pretty hot-headed and stubborn towards the others. Aye, aye, Captain. You don't really look like Nina's sister. Same mom, different dad. Okay, well, you might get special treatment from Dr. Henry, but it's not going to work with me. She's basically the stand-in for Dixie because, you know, if you wanted to sum up her entire character arc, my life bird. Holden then goes to meet Sasha outside and adjusting her color, she misinterprets that as him hitting on her. Nina says you have to hold on to these for years. Just need one thing. What was that? OMG. I thought you were trying to kiss me. I was fixing your collar. I can't believe I just did that. I should go. He, he plays it off like he's disgusted, only to kiss her back straight after. Man, he really did get over that girl from the last season quickly, even though they, you know, never actually broke up or anything. And you shouldn't stop doing this. You think I'm good? No. Anyway. <laughs> That's how I lost my medical license. Episode two begins with a crotch shot for some reason. Of the newest volunteer, Jamie, played by Kiyosia. Someone who's actually successful on TikTok, where he films himself picking up his girlfriend by the... What? what? Is, 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 that allow, is that allowed? Is that allowed? Is that... What the hell? The irony is for his character, he left to do photography, but then realized his photography was terrible and came back to Attaway, despite in real life. Him being a TikToker. What happened to the career in photography? Uh, I mean, the pay is terrible and so are my photos, so. Jamie then walks over to Dr. Henry, who's on his phone for the second time now. I just like to imagine that he's on Twitter arguing with someone about the validity of NFTs. You simply don't get it, guys. The red cartoon ape is in fact hilarious and I bought it on OpenSea. <laughs> but then... A shocking revelation. Nina recognizes Jamie somewhere in some way. It's not really specified. Probably an ex-boyfriend. Oh my God. I love how in the first season, Nina had basically no personality apart from being a mentor to the youngest students. So now the writers have tried to cope by adding in some new character that she apparently has a pass with. She's a sister of one and an ex-boyfriend of another. Sasha then assumes that Nina and Jamie had some kind of falling out and wants to patch it up, despite knowing none of the context. Maybe if you and Jamie just... No. There's nothing to forgive. I'm not mad. Okay. Plot twist. She was pretty mad. You're gonna stay mad at me forever? I'm not mad. I'm busy. So if you need something, ask. Meanwhile, Benny and... Rosie are taking care of the Xbox 360 headset kid. And Rosie does what she interprets as being helpful, only for it to completely backfire. Yeah, I keep it pretty low-key here, but I've been experimenting with my look. You know, I had a cousin who thought he was gay, but then he went through this whole process to try to figure it out. Turns out he wasn't gay after all. Benny snitches to Nina, who tells Rosie, you can't be doing no more of that, or you get a permaban. Consider this a warning, but next time it happens, I'll be forced to write you up. I was just trying to help him. I obviously wouldn't force someone to do something they wouldn't want to do. All right. Nina then switches everyone's placements so Benny and Rosie don't have to work with each other. But now Sasha and Holden, who are kind of dating, kind of not, interpret this as an attack against them. Do you think Nurse Christine told her about us? No, why? Why else would she be switching up our assignments? One thing I love about this show is like, whenever someone needs a private moment, they always go to this same storage room every single time. Honestly, in reality, you might as well just have a private conversation in the hallways. Just look how barren they are. Alternatively, this 
is a real hospital, but they've sealed the doors so nobody can disturb filming. I mean, they'll be fine. There's probably another hospital. They got free health care. Oh. You don't have free health care, do you? And before the cope about knife crime in the comment section, I'm waiting. There's also a side plot with this girl, Eva, not to be confused with Kit from the first season. She's played by Rave Vanias. There's not too much I could find on her, apart from after being an Attaway, she went on Vibe Room. Oh my god, it, it looks like the room from the American Utopia remake. The episode ends with Eva going into surgery for a busted up leg, and there's a chance that she could never be a gymnast again. Oh no! Episode three begins with Sasha talking to Holden about lab rats, as you do. The technology already exists to edit DNA. Scientists have reversed the age of lab rats and think they'll be able to reverse the age of our cells within a lifetime. See, in context, this is terrifying because like, you know, if you could stop age related diseases and essentially live forever, what would you do? I'm not talking about in the world. I'm talking about inside the confines of Atway General, where there's no escape. There are only so many TikToks you can dance to with quirky music until it all feels the same. Here is the three stages of life everyone should follow. Childhood. Enjoy it. Once it's gone, it's never coming back. Once you start watching videos about why I don't enjoy video games anymore, you're a lost cause. The next stage. Adulthood. You try to make as much money under any means as quickly as possible. If it becomes too much, get a therapist and lie about what you do for a living. What line of work are you in? <laughs> Waste management consultant. Final, final stage. Bitter old boomer, where you laugh in your ivory tower at the peasants trying to make as much money as possible during adulthood, while you sit there in your armchair drinking your overpriced whiskey. Okay, let's go. You could really tell I wrote that part at 5 a.m. Jesus Christ. Tangent aside, Eva is in recovery while her friends give her support. We should be getting ready to win nationals. Now we'll be lucky to even qualify. Okay, Debbie Downer. We're here to cheer her up, remember? I love how this guy is trying to be the positive one. When one episode ago, he said this. My life is over. Oh. Well, I guess you can kiss nationals goodbye. I'm the supportive guy, by the way, your life's over. But I do support you, even though your life's over. I told you I'm good. I'm so glad you found someone to play with. My online squad went deep, Rosie. I play with other people all day. I hate knowing that this is the kid that bodies me in every video game imaginable. Have you seen the current Fortnite player base? You could give any of those god sweats a carpentry apprenticeship. You shoot a guy from five kilometers away and he recreates the entire Red Dead 2 house building montage in five seconds. Holden and Sasha then try getting it on and hiding by putting a book in their face, which is about as conspicuous as any disguise in Hitman. Gentlemen, security is secured. You are not safe here. Clear out. Amanda, I have nothing to report from my current location. Over. Sasha, then in hilarious fashion, does a funny with one of her patients. Well, there's just one teensy tiny problem. What? Oh. Whoops. I do respect that they have the dementia patient and they play it off as a gag. I, I want to say, I, I saw these videos on YouTube of like what it's like to have Alzheimer's or dementia, like, like a simulation of it, and it is horrifying. You're in a constant state of confusion and panic and not knowing where you are. But here, it was, it was played as a gag. It's for, it's for, she got lost. Nanny got lost. <laughs> Meanwhile, Eva is coping to Benny about possibly never being able to be a gymnast again. Oh, gosh, golly gee, boys. I, I have no idea what she could be after failing to be a gymnast. It, it's not like they put it in the literal promotional material of the show. They eventually find the dementia patient who demands alcohol to cope. Did you two get me a Tom Collins or are you too busy necking? Same queen. The episode ends with Holden and Sasha going outside again, and their energies this time are just complete opposite. Sasha being incredibly high energy, like she missed taking her Ritalin, and Holden coming across like the protagonist of every Silent Hill game ever. I can't believe I let that happen. Hey, it's okay. All's well that ends well, right? I don't like lying to Nina. We have to be more careful. Yeah, I agree. That was pretty stressful. Can I buy you coffee to make up for it? I really shouldn't. You can tell me about those lab rats. Well... In that case... You can see Maeve in the background annoyed with the pair, despite showing no kind of interest prior. No, you can't have fun when you shift over. Go back in the cryopod until your next summon, slave. The next episode has a lot of 
attention as someone is now being wheeled into the emergency room. You can tell it's an emergency because they have a slow pan towards the emergency sign. God, if only Christopher Nolan had the cinematography as clear and concise as this show. You're probably wondering who's being wheeled into the emergency room. It's Jamie. Who's Jamie again? He is the uh, photography guy. Apparently, he's not even a volunteer, but just a full-on EMT. Anyway, we get a flashback to about four years ago where Jamie and Nina were dating. I also like how this flashback is like the first time we've been away from Outaway General in ever. It's nice to know that they got some more budget. Obviously, not enough to bring Dixie D'Amelia back, but you know, still. Anyway, they do a little bit of graffiti on a dumpster. And when I mean a little bit of graffiti, this is like a hand shaped size of graffiti. You, you could get a band aid and cover two thirds of it. Anyway, they get caught doing it and they end up in juvie. We see Nina, who's now in an office. And honestly, I do respect this scene. Since this is your first offense and you seem like a nice kid, I'll give you an option. You can either pick up trash by the side of the road or volunteer at the hospital. Now, as much as this video is TikTok le bad, and trust me, TikTok le bad, this is a good scene. It gives context to the kind of person that Nina is. In the first season, she was just like a mentor type with no real character traits apart from bossing people around, but also being nice. But here, it's shown that she's much more vulnerable as a character, and more importantly, wouldn't have even been here unless she was forced to, implying the fact that she doesn't even want to be at Attaway. She basically had two options, pseudo doctor or trash man. And I know which one I'd pick. There's the guy on the oh, I'm the trash man. man. <laughs> We get another flashback of Nina just starting a job where she meets Jamie, where he's in the same position as her. You can tell it's a flashback because they changed the tint of the screen slightly. Something Breaking Bad would shamelessly steal 10 years earlier in the episode. <laughs> Jamie tells Nina that he wants to leave and become a photographer, which obviously didn't pan out too well because in the present day, he's just came crawling back to Attaway. What is it? Is it mom? It's not mom. He ate dinner without YouTube. Jamie! Now, I don't mind flashbacks too much. They're great at world building and giving context. The problem is these are every five seconds. Usually a flashback compiles a bunch of events together. So, you know, the audience go, okay, I know where this character's from, what their intentions are, etc., etc. But here they keep invading every scene like it's a flashbang. And the worst thing is you can tell that these scenes were filmed back to back because the cast look exactly the same but instead you just have this invasive filter that is like a mix between battlefield 2042 and any hideo kojima game nina and jamie break up because nina feels that she's trying much harder than jamie who just wants a more casual relationship and this scene is incredibly hard to watch because it comes across that Jamie's actor is just being fed the lines as they appear like it's an auto prompt or something. Not if it means I have to leave you and my family. I know you're afraid. I mean, change is scary, but yeah, that's what you're meant to do. The next episode starts off with, wait, is, is that the square head guy? That was a thing for like a week on TikTok. Also, they're giving this serial way too much screen time, probably more than anyone. Ah, oh, it's because it's an ad. Of course. We had popcorn with collagen for no reason in Lies on Demand. And now it's Cinnamon Crunch, the cereal of toddlers and man children. Perfect for all audiences of this show. We then cut to eight hours earlier. Wait, if, the, if this is a flashback in a flashback, or is this the present? I, I guess not because the colors are brighter now. I hope you mean that, because you just described the perfect date. Okay, throw in a pizza and a hard comedy of my choosing, I'm game. Throw in some acting classes, a less monotone voice, I'm game. <laughs> Meanwhile, Benny, you remember, remember that character that was just kind of thrown to the side? Anyway, he's taking care of Eva while she goes through physio. I mean, it's so sad, you know? I mean, crazy how just a few seconds can really change your whole life. I know how you feel, Benny. I once jumped off a bridge in a video game and then made an obscure video on an ARG and my life was changed forever. Wipe this meme from the face of the earth. Wayne is so badly damaged. There's not gonna be any recovery. It's just, they're trying to get it out and it's too damaged. Hey, don't loiter because when you're done with this, there's plenty more laundry in the shed that still needs sorting. Are, are they trying to write Maeve as the villain, by the way? She's just so unnecessarily mean. She's contributed nothing to the show apart from being cruel to everyone else. At least, you know, Dixie D'Amelio's character had like a, a sudden turn at the end, you know, a redemption arc. One thing I've noticed with this season it's a lot more repetitive than the first. In the original, every episode pretty much brought on a new scenario, like a, a patient or a danger or something to throw into the mix. But we're now at the midpoint of the series and they're still doing the kissing behind object bit and the Xbox 360 headset kid.
wanna sniff some crack with me? The, the kid's called Elijah, by the way, and he's actually such a respectful gamer that he'll let them keep on dating as long as he isn't interfered. Sorry to pull you into this, Elijah. Your secret's safe with me, just... No more sabotaging the squad. Agreed. Yeah, on, on Xbox, that kid would definitely have the uh, the family setting. He'd be in the family zone. You guys remember that? I bet after you kill someone in Six Siege, you send them a written apology on how you made their day slightly worse. If we had more people like Elijah as gamers, you would actually be able to talk to the opposite team in Halo Infinite. Video game industry actually be like words le bad, but unironically. Also, regarding Jamie, who is in intensive care, they finally have an update. Any news on Jamie? Well, he's about to lose his spleen, but you don't need that to live. She says it so nonchalantly, like, yeah, his life could be changed forever, but he's alive. So that's fine, I guess. Lol. Meanwhile, Benny and Eva are still doing physio, and Eva pretty much gives up and checks her phone. My team, they won nationals. They didn't need me. Okay. But, but that's a good thing, right? Your team won without you? It's almost like with all those years of training, they, they never needed you, and you were easily replaceable so this entire bit is to prove to nina how replaceable she was welcome to youtube don't give this girl a youtube account believe me her mental health will be destroyed in a week while that's happening nina is emotional about jamie going into surgery oh my god look an extra an actual extra quick catch her in a net and use her 40 times to save the budget after talking to nina sasha goes to see holden and oh my god guys i think they might break up this is so sad please Drop a like if you cry at this scene. You're not worried about us getting caught? I talked to Nina today. She knows about us? She's worried about me, and I understand why. Okay. I think this is all going a little too fast for me. I think we need some time off. What, what, what was that build up? It's like they're about to reveal them the, the results on MasterChef or something. She's worried about me, and I understand why. Okay. But yeah, Sasha wants to break it off or at least slow down the relationship to the point that it dies of malnutrition. How sad. The next episode, Holden and Sasha are getting coffee. And if you couldn't tell it was sad, they play sad music while Nina looks awkwardly asking if everyone's okay. Are you okay? I'm fine. I'd feel bad for them. I, I genuinely would. But we know that this is going to be resolved in 15 minutes or less. The only person in season one that didn't have a good ending was the old guy. And that's because God no-scoped him. <laughs> God. God no scoped him. I wrote that in the script. God no scoped him. <laughs> if I can offer you a bit of a deathbed advice. Stop saying that. You just had a heart attack. Dr. Henry gathers all the volunteers around to tell them that at this current moment, there is no clear winner to go to New York University. And also doing the gag where he checks his phone for, for a third time now. Honestly, at this rate, I'm just going to edit him doing something different on his phone every single time. The competition for this internship is stiff. It's... I'm sorry, um, as, as I was saying. Now, if you're wondering why he's been checking his phone so much, Again, a positive I need to give out away. This isn't just for a gag, but an actual plot thread. You see, Dr. Henry, as brave as he is, he's been hitting on Benny's mom. She is such a bad bitch, though. Tell me what? Dr. Henry, I literally saw him leaving my house this morning. Like, saw him kiss my mom and everything. So that's why he was so happy when I saw him. I mean, at this point, everyone in Attaway is going to be related in some way. How far down south is this made-up city anyway? While that's happening, Holden, who's being lectured by Rosie, is being taught that he's a strong, independent man and he don't need no woman holding him down. A lot of patients, especially Elijah, really love hanging out with you. Maybe without a girl distracting you, you'd find a greater purpose here. Just think about it. Also, Dr. Henry then confronts Benny and apologizes that he found out the hard way that he's dating his mom. And uh, Benny's response is actually genius. Um, sorry that you had to find out about your mom and I like that. It's not exactly the way we wanted to break the news. Okay. It's great because it reminds me so much of the JCS criminal psychology videos. No, I mean, I want you to know I really enjoy spending time with her. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> we don't have to do this. I mean... You would be hard-pressed to find a more guilty-looking face in the history of investigative journalism. If this was a soap opera, the director would probably tell the actor to tone it down a little bit, to at least give the viewer a shred of doubt that he's not completely full of shit. Elijah and Holden are now gaming, and I just want to say, could someone in the comments tell me what video game they're playing? The only color is green. I assume they're just like playing a Matrix game or something. But Holden now wants Elijah to get some rest. I think you should take a nap. I'm fine. 
Naps are for babies. What? Don't knock it till you've tried it. You know I'm the king of naps. What? What do you mean? Don't knock it until you've tried it. Has this kid been awake his entire life? Like he's got some kind of like sleep disorder or something? I just imagine like Holden puts the kid to sleep and he just, he just doesn't wake up. Dr. Henry just comes in. Holden, that was such a great use. That kid was a drain on our resources. Now you get to go to New York University. Meanwhile, Benny is venting to Eva that Dr. Henry will probably leave his mom because him and his brother are so different. The men my mom date don't stick around. They literally meet me and my brother and then they bail. I mean, honestly, Benny, I have no idea why you're worried, man. Like, look how nice Dr. Henry was to his actual own daughter in the first season. Georgia, straighten up that posture. This is ridiculous. Hey, do not speak unless spoken to. Your mom texted she's not going to be able to see you next weekend. So, can I have some friends over tonight, Dad? No. Why not? Dad, we... can we talk? Not now. The next episode starts with... Jamie? Yeah, yeah, it's Jamie. Finally, I don't have to refer to my Google Doc of names for this one. That's not a joke, by the way. Like, I actually made a Google Doc with their names and their faces because all these people are so forgettable. At one point in the script, I had to, like, just refer to them by their name badges. Anyway, Jamie and Eva are doing physio when Benny walks in and does a funny spin. Oh my gosh, Benny, you look... Gorgeous. <laughs> Stop. You're making me blush. Come on, do a spin. Come oh, on. If I have to. I heard. Sasha and Nina are talking about how Benny and Rosie still aren't talking to each other after Rosie had the whole gay conversion therapy take, which leads to Rosie unironically developing a sixth sense and understanding the complete reason of why they aren't on good terms. I have to ask her about Benny. Why? Don't worry about it. What? Did she suggest gay conversion therapy or something? Uh, I will not confirm or deny anything. What? It's played off as a bit, but like that, that, that that's way too specific. Come on. That's a cap. This is like predicting every single character that dies in Harry Potter without watching any of the movies or reading any of the books. Which actually, no, you know what? To be fair, that is incredibly easy to guess. Harry lives, by the way. This cap! This cap! Afterwards, the group meet to check on Elijah and Dr. Henry walks in and asks them more medical questions, which leads to this... Very weird analogy. So, who can tell us about any new techniques in osteocarcinoma radiation? I can do that. A uh, machine outside of the body emits high energy laser beams directly at the tumor. Just like Skywalker's lightsaber. Yeah, but instead of killing stormtroopers, we're taking out cancer cells. Also, there's this part where they have a dementia patient who's had a fall and everyone is just talking about the symptoms of dementia, like in earshot, like right in front of her. I know junior doctors learn from experience and talking about people's conditions, but talking about someone's mental illness, like within earshot of them, it feels kind of rude. This is Miss Creevy. She's had a bit of a fall since her last adventure with us, which can sometimes escalate her dementia. So who can remind us of the symptoms? Moodiness, confusion, and inability to remember others. That's right. What makes it worse is how they say it in this happy tone. You're going to forget everything, even your loved one's face, because that's dementia. Afterwards, Dr. Henry starts to rinse Benny for information on his mom, in particular, if she enjoys seafood. Can I talk to you for a second? Sure. Does your mom like shrimp? Uh, I think so. Great. <laughs> I, I want to surprise her with a dinner reservation. I'm happy he likes prawns. Just don't ever eat what Tony Soprano ate in the beloved children's show, The Sopranos. It's my stomach. I'm nauseous. Oh, Jesus. Oh, fuck. <laughs> fucking motherfucking lugs. Oh, what's going on? Hey, my father's sick. Oh my god, Daddy. What happened? I'm in the restaurant. That is so racist. That's a real scene, by the way. I did not edit any of those sound effects. This episode has a 9.4 on IMDb. Oh my god, Daddy. But then, Benny does something so thought-provoking and brave, he actually brings the rating of Attaway General from a 1 to a 1.5 by doing a literal damn Daniel with Dr. Henry's shoes. But if you're going to date my mom, you can't wear those shoes. They're really comfortable. They're really hideous. Meanwhile, Jamie meets Eva in physio, and I just want to say, like, why does Jamie's acting sound like he's about to fall asleep any second? Forgot something? I just forgot to tell you that. I think you'd make a great TV. Wow, you hobbled all the way back here just to tell me that. <laughs> wow. 
Well, I didn't want to wait until we're both healed to see you again. It's like they're trying to play him off as like this kind of cool, uncaring guy. I get that. But I've seen people with sleep apnea that have more energy than this guy. He even gets a kiss from her, which should be a huge thing, right? I mean, they even changed the soundtrack to be more accommodating, but nope, just a slight coma. Sorry. The episode ends with Maeve taking Holden to see their next patient. And despite having no romance prior, Sasha sees this, has a complete breakdown, and vows to solo sweat the entire course so she can get into NYU. Looks like Nina pulling the strings for you won't be enough, huh? Hey, ready to go? Oh, yeah. Let's do it. I'm definitely getting that internship now. I really like the trailer build-up music here. Holden has done nothing, and this girl is acting like he's just massacred her entire family tree. The next episode starts with some serious character development. Dr. Henry is now wearing a shirt. I just took your style up a level, but it's all about the confidence. You can tell he's trying really hard to be on like that instant influencer show. Y you know, the one that they wouldn't have James Charles back on. So for today's compact challenge, you guys will be filming your very own apology videos. Oh we meet up with the volunteers in the cafeteria and Eva has an announcement that she is now becoming a volunteer. Oh my God. We, we never saw this coming. I had no idea she was going to be a volunteer. Goodness gracious. And then when she works as a volunteer, she has this really weird superpower that she knows every single question that Dr. Henry throws. And what are some of the complications we see with a broken femur? There's a risk of peripheral damage to the muscles, tendons, and ligaments around the area, as well as a risk that if the bone doesn't set correctly, one leg could be shorter than the other. <laughs> nice work, Eva. You're picking this up really quickly. Keep in mind beforehand, she's shown no signs of this knowledge and didn't even really care about her recovery. But suddenly she became Einstein because someone in the hospital was nice to her. The others find this incredibly fair, more because of the fact that she's being such a kiss ass, she will get her place in NYU and the others won't. To counter this, Benny starts God defending her, mostly because they had a single conversation three episodes ago. Eva has just as much of a right to be here as you do. And I hope she wins the internship. She deserve it more than some of the fake gossips around here. Ugh. I want to ask, what is this transition music? You, you could have just had like a, a Call of Duty quick scope montage from 2015, and it would have been the exact same. She deserve it more than some of the fake gossips around here. Ugh. We've been spotted. <laughs> Sasha personally starts to get jealous when Eva is doing a better bedside manner with all the patients, which includes just touching Jamie's hair for no reason. I mean, look, look at this clip. Look at how many times she does it. Sasha then tells Nina how annoying Eva is being. And Nina explains that she's the one who set up Eva and Jamie to start dating, despite the fact that she told her own sister to not date anyone because it would ruin her career. This isn't like a flaw she has, by the way, like being too commanding or being a hypocrite. It's just a flaw by the writers, a complete oversight. I was the one who told him to go for it. Wait, what? Why? Because we're friends and he should be able to move on. I was the one who broke up with him, remember? Oh, it, it's because they're friends. Oh, I understand now. Okay, so, so friends good siblings bad. Oh my god. Why didn't I think of that in the first place? Thank you, Attaway General. Your writing is superb. I actually wouldn't be surprised at this rate if like anyone that worked on this show was like a screenwriter for keeping up with the Kardashians. Uh, what's up with the grunting? Uh. Are you okay, <laughs> Mom, with this grunting? What do you mean? Do you want to hear mom have sex? Also, breaking news, Benny and... Look up the Google Doc. Mikey are now dating. If you're wondering who Mikey is, he was the guy that was like caring for Eva in the first episode. And that's literally the only contribution he's had to the entire show. He's played by Skylar Guthrie. And the only thing I can find him in is another TikTok medical drama. But this time he's cosplaying as Snake from the Metal Gear Solid 5 intro. But then we'll never catch our guy. This is the only way to protect Noah and catch the Phantom red-handed. V has come too. Later on, Eva and Jamie are having an actual date now, which leads to Nina having some very choice words. Figured since we can't go on a proper date, I'd make one here. You could join us. Yeah, you're more than welcome to join. No, it's okay. Have fun. Nice, nah, okay. You know, Dementia Lady, she's grabbed a scalpel and she's like threatening a bunch of people. 
But you enjoy your date. Meanwhile, Sasha goes to Holden and tells him that Rosie told Benny to go get gay conf you know that thing that happened in the very first episode and she apologized for it and actually felt bad what was that what was that being brought up again holden in return calls her a complete snitch and then sasha suddenly has like these feelings out of nowhere for him and wants to go on a date I i'm sorry I didn't mean to tell you just sort of came out let me make it up to you taco truck you love is outside today i'll buy you dinner i'm sorry I have a date tonight. What? I like how she's surprised, by the way. Keep in mind, this is the girl who told Holden that she doesn't want to date anymore. So he's more than freely allowed to go and speak to other girls if he wants to. The funny thing is, Holden isn't even talking to anyone at Attaway. He is that down bad that he started talking to his ex again. So thank you, Sasha. You took the one innocent character in the show, apart from Elijah with the Xbox 360 headset, and you took him and you crushed him. The next episode begins with a little girl going into hospital on her own, apparently after a skateboarding accident. It's okay, honey. I'll take you inside. But my board! I'll take good care of it. I promise. Could you imagine, like, that they just send the girl away, but then they take the board and they put it on a bed with a drip? Guys, you don't understand. Like, the, the, the girl's important. The girl is important. But it was a Louis Supreme collab. It's worth, like, 25k. This is Ooh. some sport thing. I don't know. After that dramatic intro, Nina is talking to Jamie about dating Eva, saying that even though he likes her, there's not really any kind of spark there. Nothing's wrong. She's great. There's just no spark. Mm. I'll just wait for the spark to ignite. You'll probably be waiting about 10 to 15 years for that. Have you seen how slow this guy talks? The only comparison I can make is when you get a tech tutorial and you put it at half speed. Also, Jamie goes to kiss Nina because like briefly they were a thing. And of course she rejects him. Oh my goodness, how brave. Redditor. Okay, everyone, listen up for assignments. Oh, fun. Great top, by the way. Uh Thanks. I like to imagine that there's some kind of grading system on Kiss Assery. Like, you get all the questions wrong, but then you say Dr. Henry has a nice shirt. Instantly a pass into NYU. Also, Sasha is trying to assist the little girl and give us some, you know, bedside manner. And honestly, it's completely atrocious. Look, if you don't have the surgery done soon, then you'll be here all night. And you don't want to be in the ear all night. Weird things can happen. Trust me. Help us help you. I told you. I already gave the nurse their contact info. They'll eventually call back. Let's hope you don't lose your arm before that happens. What? She's joking. That won't happen. Am I? I like how Sasha cooking herself from Holden has like made her enter this like Disney tier villain arc in like 10 minutes. Just like roasting this girl saying that she's never going to see her family again if she doesn't have the surgery. Afterwards, Sasha goes to her sister Nina to again complain about Holden. I don't get why he's everyone's golden boy now. This is why I told you not to get involved. You should be focused on your patient and not hold in. Not everything is about you. Fine, whatever. I mean, if you didn't get in the way and talk to Sasha about being with Holden, she wouldn't have cooked him, and then this whole situation wouldn't have happened. And also, Holden would have never started talking to his ex again. So, uh, moral of the story? Everything in the show ever is Nina's fault. Meanwhile, Benny and Rosie have another argument, with Benny feeling persecuted by Rosie's religious beliefs, and Rosie feeling personally attacked on her beliefs. They mic spam so much to the point that Dr. Henry has to come outside and tell them both to shut up. Wow. <laughs> On the other side of the hospital, Holden is actually trying to help the injured girl. I think he's actually the first person to do this the entire episode. And he asks her the important questions like if the injuries are actually her own. Is everything okay at home? Do you feel safe there? Do you need help? Are these injuries really from a skateboard? Now, I want to say it's really good he's doing this. He's making the kid feel comfortable and safe and in case there's anything going on at home. But it does also make me laugh that the kid coped that bad that they would laugh as a skateboarder and buy an entire skater outfit just to hide the fact that they got the injury from somewhere else. In reality, the skateboarder girl did get the injury from herself, but she's worried about her family knowing because they might worry about it and freak out and their marriage is already on edge. And you know what? I can't make fun of this. They've dealt with it really well and it talks about a vulnerable issue. The only problem I have is the fact that to get this information, Sasha literally had to steal a child's phone. Uh, since I'm in here, I might as well pick up something for myself. The episode ends with Nina and Jamie finally getting it on, which again is a bit hypocritical because she told her younger sister Sasha to not hit on any of the volunteers because it's unprofessional. Don't ruin this. 
for something that might not even happen. You have way too much potential to waste it all on a silly crush. I like how there's this happy music, like, oh my god, another relationship at Attaway, the fifth one today, it's so wonderful and wholesome. And then slowly the camera will just like pan over and you see Sasha just staring in the doorway with evil intent. The premise of the next episode is the group coming together for a variety talent show. I assume while this is going on, everyone in urgent care just has to wait their turn. What's the deal with airplane food? While Dr. Henry makes hilarious jokes. So um, this comedian, he comes into my office and he says, Doc, I can't tell jokes anymore. So I told him it must be his funny boat. <laughs> funny, funny boat. I think this guy's a lost cause. Why don't we just cut our losses and get out of here? There's even a bit with one of the nurses using a ventriloquist doll. And I, I want to say how brave the writers are for even thinking you that the average six-year-old will know what a ventriloquist doll is. If it's not a six-second video of a girl dancing, I don't know what it is. Inside the hospital, Dr. Henry offers the NYU scholarship to Nina for her outstanding work. When you won the scholarship to Provincetown last time, you ended up declining. Well, I would like to offer it to you again now. Me? Why? You've shown so much promise in your time here. You work harder than anyone. You deserve the scholarship. It's yours if you want it. Outstanding work being getting back with her ex, and I, I actually cannot think of a single thing that she's done in the show. To make things even worse, Eva is now telling Nina that she has no idea why Jamie has suddenly started ghosting her. What do you mean? Like, he's been really weird and distant and won't tell me what's wrong? Uh, yeah. I'm not sure. He hasn't told me anything. Would you check up on him? I swear, they're doing this just to force conflict in the season finale out of absolutely nowhere. They've made Nina go from someone that's actually very caring to now making all the wrong decisions and being incredibly controlling. I mean, you had that whole plot thread with uh, Rosie and Benny arguing about their different beliefs, but that, again, that, that was brought up a second time and nipped in the bud again yeah. after they both apologized. Yeah! The show starts for real with Sasha and Holden doing a dance that goes on for way way too long. Benny does a funny dance and to be fair, pulls off the feminine look extremely well. Not as good as me. Not as good as me, but you know, gold star for trying. Now the final episode... Wait, really? Eva gives Benny a bunch of, you know, compliments and stuff. I mean, they, they haven't really been in a scene together like at all, so l l let's just shoehorn that in. Also, Nina tells Jamie that she can't be seen with him anymore because she's leaving Attaway and to her, that would be immoral. I don't really want you to go, but... Um... Oh my god, we, we actually got some emotion from Jamie there. I mean, it, it, keep going, buddy. I mean, soon you might get the, the Fallout 4 sarcastic option. Also, Benny sees this going on and threatens to snitch to Ava, who has no idea that the relationship is going on. Yeah, re remember when this show was about, like, saving lives? I mean, I get medical shows, you know, like, they, they need to show the personal lives of the patients and the carers and the trainees, the volunteers, whatever, but, like, wh wh where are the people at, bro? I just see, like, TikTokers talking, bro. You don't even need this to be a medical show. I mean, last season, you had the old guy from Up and loads of other things, and it, it, this series, we've had Jamie Ford over and skateboard girl keep in mind the season finale for the first season two of the main characters going for operations that could ultimately change their lives and this one oh no what if we kiss in the hallway and get caught oh my god i mean to be fair you know at least elijah's happy i think one of the writing staff told him that they're going to stop filming soon so he can actually go home if you fall and crack your head open you're going to be here a lot longer and then dr henry does probably one of the most stupidest choices in the whole series and believe me, there are a lot of stupid choices. That the last day of this year's TV program is also Elijah's last day with us. So in honor of that serendipity, I've decided to let him choose who gets the internship. It's stupid because some of these volunteers haven't even talked to Elijah or properly met him. The people caring for him and the people that had the most time with him in return will probably be picked higher. But don't worry, guys. Don't don't worry. It was a pr it was a prank. It was a prank. It's a it's a prank. Of course he's kidding. <laughs> oh, your face is that's so that good. That was great. <laughs> Sasha then eventually confronts Holden and apologizes directly for being so on and off with him. She says that she deserves someone better than him, and honestly, this is a really self-aware moment. Bravo, Attaway General. That is like the second self-aware scene you've had in the entirety of this series. Dr. Henry then gets all the volunteers together to actually announce who's going to NYU. It's kind of like those gift card giveaways that plagued YouTube in 2018, but here you actually get something. I'm also thrilled to announce that this year, Nina is the recipient of the DuPont Scholarship. 
Congratulations. Oh my, who could have seen that coming? It's not like Dr. Henry just outright told her before everyone was announced that she was going to get it. Goodness, the writing here, guys. Because it's uh, totally rigged at this point, like completely rigged, more than CSGO gambling, Dr. Henry gives out a second award, and the reaction is even worse. Maeve, congratulations. Yes! Thank you so much. You're welcome. I like how Maeve gets it. The girl with about five scenes in the entire show. She's a lot like Rosie. You, you, you kind of just forget that she's there. Like, oh yeah, it's, it's Rosie again. Ah, oh, great. Yeah. The love triangle with the others has eaten into pretty much all the screen time that I forget all these subplots of like people, you know, actually being doctors. Eva, annoyed that she didn't get a scholarship, goes and cries to Jamie. I'm a real person who liked you. So the least you could do was give me the decency of an actual honest breakup, you jerk. That was probably the most destructive scene in the entire show. I mean, that prop must have cost at least 50 quid. There's about three minutes of screen time left. So you know what? R writers, you want to go home? I want to go home. I want the video to be over. I'll, I'll just summarize it. Yeah. All right. Let me see. I just want to write here. Benny dribbles about Rosie going to a private school and then Holden breaks up with his ex that we never even saw. Probably a figment of his imagination. So now they're back together. How wholesome. Wow. What a what a great ending. In conclusion, Attaway General is one of the most powerful all inspiring documentaries I've seen in my entire life of what would actually happen if you put TikTokers inside a hospital. No lives would be saved. There would be several mortalities, but the TikTokers are so wholesome and quirky and also sponsored by Bang Energy. Come on, guys, give them a, give them a doctor a go on, please. Thank you all for watching. I'm just gonna go enjoy my free healthcare. All right, take it easy, guys. I want to be a TikToker.